right guys, welcome to Gone Hiking. Take 642. You're right guys, welcome to Gone Hiking. We are back out. We are at the very start of the coast to coast. We are at Robin Hood. No, we're not, that's the end. Let's start again, again. Take 5 million and 27, something like that. I'm getting fed up with this already. Welcome to Gone Hiking. We're at the start of the coast to coast in St. Bees. We're walking about 190 miles across the width of England to Robin Hood's Bay. It's going to take in three national parks, the Lake District, the Yorkshire Dales and the Yorkshire Moors. It's going to be an adventure. So the aim for day one is to get to Ennerdale Bridge and then take the journey to Robin Hood's Bay. Right then, hopefully out the wind, maybe. As is tradition, dunk the feet, get a pebble. There we go, found my little pebble to take with me. Now I might find a bit smaller one. Look at that little beaut, just come in with me. That's some bees lighthouse. That means we've done two and a half miles. Um, I'm really rusty. You can tell I haven't filmed for ages. Uh, I've done so many takes. Um, I'm gonna try and talk to you now for a little bit. Now we've turned off the coast and it's less windy. Uh, I didn't think it'd be very successful back there. So I just took some film. Um, I arrived, or well, the train arrived at half 12 today. Few things happened that have gone a little bit wrong. Um, I started walking, got halfway up the hill out of St. Bees, realised I didn't get my pebble or dunk my feet, so I went back down and then back up again. Um, and then, as I was also uh, going through one of the gates, I just heard it and 
don't know if anyone can tell, but I'm rocking a new pack. I really hope I haven't punctured it on some barbed wire. Oh, I can't bear to look at the minute. That would be uh, devastating if I've uh, ruined it second time out. Um, so, fingers crossed, that's okay. Uh, time is now quarter past three. Got walking about quarter past one after all faffing about. Um, so, got tracks to make. Usual plan, get to Ennerdale Bridge. Um, got a few villages to go through between now and then and up over Dent. So let's see how that goes. Uh, my plan is to hopefully stay at the Fox and Hounds pub. They uh, allow campers in their beer garden um, and maybe get some food there. Uh, if that's not an option, um, I'll push on and uh, wild camp around Ennerdale Water somewhere. So let's just push on and see how the day goes. That was uh, Samwith, uh, just past the Dog and Partridge pub. Uh, not many Coast to Coast hikers stop there because if you start in the morning, it's not open. And then if you start like me after lunchtime, you've probably got to make miles and haven't got time to stop there. So it's not often I pass by a pub, but I've got to make miles. Right guys, that was the hiker statue. It's a bit noisy on that road, lots of cars flying by. It says we've done seven miles, 184 to go. I'm not complaining, it's a beautiful day. It's not too hot, it's probably about 22 degrees. Um, perfect for walking. This morning, there was a massive rain band across the country. And then just as I got up here, could see clearing over the lakes so got so lucky with the weather um, but it does mean I am almost out of water um, I've just checked the map and there is a shop in the next village so it's time to get some water and some drink time to rehydrate and then push on up to Dent Dent's getting pretty close Yeah, that's right. I'm currently in Wainwright's Passage. <laughs> Just hope I don't get stuck in uh, Wainwright's Passage. It could be painful for me and for Wainwright. Oh, the child in me. So many things to say. Luckily, a painless, swift exit from Wainwright's Passage. Nice church. That shop is very short. Looks more like a house, doesn't look like it's been a shop for years. There's Dent in the background. Hello. Oh, man, I've got a sweat on. It's hard work going up Dent. Just come out the trees. Gonna, gotta fly my lens. <laughs> Stunning. And I'm completely unfit. <sighs> Looking back, St. Bees is that little gap there. And we walked all the way around that headland and then back and up here and onwards. You can just see a little corner of Ennerdale water down there. 
That's the end of the day. So, beautiful little wooded section, um, the other side of Dent, um, ran into a German lady walking up Dent, spoke to her for a bit, chatted, sat with her on the top, uh, come to a junction on the way down, um, she's gone right, which is longer and less steep, I've gone left, which is steeper and shorter, um, and I'm making my way to Enidale Bridge, 20 past 6 at night, it'd be lovely to get there for about half 7, fingers crossed pubs open. You're right guys, I think this was the site of the huge style that you've probably seen in other people's YouTube videos. Now that looks to be just the top of it and it looks to be a memorial to Lisa Kelly. Hopefully she didn't fall off it and that's why it's been took down. Yep. This is pretty steep. I know it never shows up on camera. Oh, hello. But yeah, high level, pretty much straight down. Slippery when wet. All right, guys, this is Nanny Catch Beck. Um, looks to be the first decent water source on the trail um i'm not going to fill up though i do walk alongside it for a little bit um because it's only two miles to the end of the day um, and i should be able to get fresh water and fresh beer from the pub so let's get these last two miles done raven's crag Someone pronounce that for me. Almost made it. Morning guys, start of day two. Just leaving the fox and hounds behind me. Great little pub, especially if you're doing this walk. Camping five pounds. Um, nice food, a really good burger. A few beers. Um, birds and everything woke me up about 4 a.m. It was light just after four. Getting on the trail, 7.40. Would have liked to have gone a bit earlier, but hey. 
It's a much earlier start than yesterday. So yesterday, I didn't really uh, do like a wrap-up video or anything. I was shattered. I got to the pub. I think it was only a 14 mile day, but tell I haven't got uh, my legs in yet. Yeah, so I got to the pub. Food, beer, bed. Um, there was lots of tents in close proximity, so uh, that was why there was no wrap-up video, just being considerate to others. Um, there's quite a few people walking the trail that I bumped into. Yesterday there was a bunch of three lads with tons of kit. Um, then the German lady I walked with for a little bit, and I met a father and son while camping. And there's quite a few groups at the pub as well. So, um, be interesting, might meet a few people along the way. And in a few places where accommodation's tight, I might actually think about booking ahead so I don't uh, lose out if we're all fighting for spaces. So, I walk along the side of Ennerdale Water today. I'm not going to go the official side. Um, I was talking to a couple in the uh, pub last night and they said it was just a washout. The, uh, the only downside to the Fox and Hounds is um, once they close the pub at night, no toilet. There wasn't any shower anyway, but that doesn't really matter. Had a wet white wash. Um, but they couldn't tell me what time the toilets were going to open this morning. They said it will be between 8 and 9 when the residents were having their breakfast. Um, so I'm probably digging my first cat hole some point this morning. Um, which will be nice. So, rookie mistake yesterday. Uh, bought some brand new trail runners uh, for this, and it's not the fact that they were brand new, uh, it's the fact that I just wore them with the laces straight out the box, so they were quite loose on my feet, slopping around like trainers, um, and it's given me a bit of a blister on my left heel. My own fault, should have laced them up properly. Um, it's not giving me too much jip though. I know it's there. It's letting me know it's there, but it's not too bad. All right, guys, this is the decision point. The official trail goes off to the right there, or you can take the uh, better path to the left. Um, I'm going to wimp out and take this one. Right, it may seem like I'm wimping out, not doing the official route, but I've got three good reasons why I'm not going to. One, it's really wet, boggy, um, tricky terrain, even though, even though this way is further, um, might be about the same speed. Two, Mr. Wainwright himself said, that you can pretty much go from coast to coast any way you like, you don't have to follow his route. So, big man himself has given me a pass there. Three, probably gonna uh, heed the call of nature at some point, and there is nowhere on that side of the lake to uh, nip into the bushes. And four, did I have a four? Oh yeah, four. I've already done that side once before. So I'm seeing somewhere new now. There you go, justified to myself at least. Robin Hood's chair. This is beautiful alongside the lake. Stunning. Oh, it's a water. There's only one lake in the lake district.
All right, guys, this is decision time. That is the way up the high route. It doesn't look too bad at the moment from there. It looks a bit overgrown, but I can see from the contours on the map, it just goes straight up at a certain point. Or there's onwards to Black Sail Hut and over the lower pass. Um, I have done that way before because the weather last time was absolutely miserable. It was peeing it down um, for five days solid in the lakes. So we took all the low routes. Um, I'm in no physical shape to be doing this, but I think I'm going to try the high route. <laughs> That's the path down there. Tops are in view now. The one on the left, it's Red Pike at 755 metres. And the one on the right, the high point of the day, is high style, 806 metres. I think that's Great Gable. There's Ennardale water in the distance. Came from the other side of that. a minute between wind gusts done the climb made it up here for 10 to 12 that's the can on the top of red pike and we've got views over to buttermere this way climbing up that one next high style and then down to haystacks but there's some beautiful views the other side of the valley Chronic Water and Buttermere, Buttermere va uh, Village in the middle. Beautiful. style 865 meters well that might be the top I'm not really sure one of them is looks like we've got quite a cool ridge walk over there um, and then up around the back and over there. And you can possibly make out the road up there. That's the road up to Honister Pass. All right, guys, we've got, as you can see behind me, the cloud is just plowing in just about see down into Buttermere. Ennerdale is just pea soup now so uh, I'm expecting to lose visibility soon as these clouds roll in on me. Path leads down there into Scarth Gap and then up the back is Haystacks.
Lights off the haystack. Dubs Hut Mountain Association Buffy. <laughs> some uh, dead platforms, wood burner, some was left a log. It smells very, very damp in here. Visitor's book, plenty of litter. That's Honister Pass in front of us, down into Borrowdale, and the end of the day. Final sort of summit is behind me, it's all downhill from here. I am happy. Four o'clock on the button, and um, I'm gonna stop in at Honister Slate Mine, probably pick myself a couple of drinks up and then just head down for the end of the day. Tired now, feet are battered. Um, I'm done. Here I go, just walking down Honister Pass into Sea Toller. Um, the Coast to Coast Pass is just off to the side, but the uneven stones are playing havoc with my knee at the minute. So the nice even road is helping my knee out. So taking the road. Alright guys, that's Sea Toller behind me. Um, I'm absolutely knackered. I'm nearly at my accommodation. Um, I will tell you my Sea Toller story tomorrow. Um, if anyone asks what my best camping experience is, it would be hard to name one because I've had so many. But if you ask me what my worst camping experience was, that's easy. Sea Toller. I'll tell you that tomorrow guys. Um, I might do some pub shots and some food shots and that's about it. I'm almost made it for the day. Thanks for watching. See you later. Someone who's been drowning Barbies. Alright guys, so my sea toller story is I arrived here with my two friends last time I was doing the coast to coast. 
and the first five days through the Lake District section it rained 24 hours a day solidly and it was miserable um, we arrived here absolutely soaked through got out wet tents got into wet gear um, I had the most miserable sort of night um, going uh, we, got, uh, we decided we were going to just get warm and try and get dry a bit walked to one of the local pubs managed to get in take all our wet gear off sit down have a meal um, the next lot of walkers that walked in soaked landlord was just he must not have seen us coming in landlord was out <laughs> Um, only kind of wanted uh, nice patrons for uh, food in there, but we'd luckily got sat down and served before he could chuck us out. Um, and then some nice lady gave us a lift back to the campsite. And then the next day we walked on in the rain again. So, most miserable night camping I've ever had. Here. Yeah. All right, guys, this is Rothway, official start of day three. So, big day ahead of us, off to Patterdale. All right, guys, so the path goes around the back of the Scaffold Hotel and goes down the side of Stonthwaite Beck um, and then climbs up. You either go down Grassmoor Common or you go down via Helm Crag um, so I'll make my mind up when I get up there which way and then it's down into Grasmere some people uh, choose to finish there others go on um, up to Grisdale Tarn and then down to uh, Patterdale so we'll see how the day goes path is a bit of a stream at the moment If this section looks familiar, it's because we've been walking along the Cumbria Way as well. The paths uh, follow the same route for a little bit. Cumbria Way goes up there, coast to coast, up that way. Final push up around the back of Lingy Crag and then down into Grasmere. Up around that one. Almost at the top. That was a good climb. A bit of scrambling at the end. Just got steeper and steeper and steeper, but I think we're up now. I have a pan around. Oh, look at this. Oh. 
last time I was up here on, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but the Grasmere Common area, um, the cloud had come in, visibility was down to nothing. As you can see, there's not much around here to navigate by. You could see 10 feet in front of us. Luckily I had one of the really early sat navs. We used to have to key in every waypoint, every way marker. And we also ran into a group that was uh, lost up here and managed to get them down. That GPS saved my life that day. I think Hal Valian's up there. Um, after lunch, we're going up there. guys so um a bit of a weird turn of events um you probably noticed my filming coming down um into grasmere i uh, was a bit limited um i just started feeling really unwell um shivering um upset sort of stomach feeling um got down into grasmere bought some food had dinner drank plenty um, sat there for about an hour just trying to feel better um, and sort of shaking cold um, so I called it a Grasmere I was hoping to go on to Patterdale um, and there's not really any camping um, around Grasmere I didn't really want to wild camp this early in the day um, it's just gone half three now um, so I've jumped on a bus just to a campsite that I can get in at um, and I'll jump back on the bus tomorrow morning and pick it up from Grasmere. Um, so, not much filming today. Um, I'm probably just gonna get in my sleeping bag and hunker down um, and hope I feel better tomorrow. Um, it always seems to happen. I always seem to have one day feeling really lousy on the hike and get over it and then I'm alright. But we shall see. So, hopefully, we'll be back on it tomorrow. Thanks for watching. There you go, there's my alarm clock. Morning guys, let me catch you up. Felt rough last night. I was in bed for six and slept through. Um, I ended up getting a bus to Chapel Style um, because there's a first come first serve campsite there that I thought I'd be able to get in at. Um, which I did. Um, and now um, it's 8 a.m. in the morning deciding to walk back to Grasmere rather than wait for the first bus at 10am because then it would probably take me, I probably wouldn't get in till 11 and we'd be setting off fairly late so three and a bit miles to Grasmere so hopefully I can set off around half nine I'll, uh, I'll catch up when we're back at Grasmere Alright guys, um, just put up a bit of footage there of um, the youth hostel which is shut. All the youth hostels are shut at the minute. It is the year of the plague, the year of coronavirus, which is making logistics a bit trickier. Um, 
half the campsites haven't opened so the other half that have are rammed which makes uh, getting in campsites a bit tricky through the dale section i think it's going to be all wild camping i can't see that any of those campsites have opened yet um and also for getting meals at pubs and things it's uh, a lot of them are after bookings and limiting numbers and all that so um just making this year a little bit more challenging than it usually would be so on the downhill into grassmere now and then we'll start the day's walk yeah right guys that's grassmere lake in front of us grassmere village in the background we're walking up that gap today um you have high route options um st sunday craig on the right and dolly wagon pike on the left i think i'll be doing the low route today um because i want to try and take a chunk out of tomorrow's day this is the start of the climb up to glysdale tarn walk through grassmere been to the toilet yet again I think I've had a stomach bug. Hopefully I'm over that now. Let's get up here and down into Patterdale. That wasn't too bad a climb actually, an hour and ten, something like that. And now the view's down into Patterdale. All's water down the bottom. Don't know if shows up on video at all peeps, but the path up to Angle Tarn is up along there.
All right, guys. Good climb. Pat's down and Glen Ridding and all's water in the background. Not too far up to Angletarn and tent for the night. All right, guys, all set up at Angle Time. What a difference a day makes. Yesterday, struggling, feeling ill. I think it was a stomach bug. Um, called it half time. Um, so today, I did the second leg of that into Patterdale. Um, got to the pub by about two. Um, I've had the afternoon in the beer garden because this is forecast to be the, sort of the best day of the trip. Hair on the lens, maybe. Get off. So yeah, this is forecast to be the best day of the trip. Um, and what better night to spend it at Angle Tarm. That's epic. Um, there's a few people on the peninsula and a few on the nab. So I've just set myself back up a little bit. Don't want to crowd them. Um, it's probably going to be less midgified back away from the water as well. Views not quite so good, but hey, not bad views from the tent anyway. Um, so yeah, I wanted to do half the climb because tomorrow it could rain from fairly early on um, So half the climb left to do and then down a side of Hawes water and into Shap so um, I might get up as early as I can uh, To try and miss as much of the forecast rain that there is um, And then go from there So cheers guys. I might do a wrap-up um, Thanks for watching so far anyway Morning guys, just packed up, there's my spot, leave no trace, and we are heading up there, and up there over the back I think, um, so looking that way, some ominous clouds, just trying to beat the rain to Shap, um, it's fairly windy, I'm in quite a secluded spot, so there probably won't be much talking along the top at all. So let's get cracking. That's High Street, that's Kitsty Pike, if you can hear anything. <laughs> I think I missed the window, the clouds just enveloped the top. So it's probably waterproofs on now, um, as I will be in the cloud with no visibility. Good little climb at the minute. I'm trying to beat all those angry looking clouds over I'm trying to at least get down before the rain starts um, that's my goal at the minute
Kidsty Pike, highest point on the coast to coast. And done it before the rain. Spectacular clouds. Um, Hawes water down there. Shaps that way somewhere. Amazing clouds over the peaks. Stunning. Let's get down off here, it's freezing. You can see the dales off in the distance in the cloud. Man down. Medic. Oh. oh. There's sheep over there laughing at me too. Yeah, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Pretty beautiful alongside of Hawes Water. Um, I think I lost my sunglasses yesterday when I went up to sit in the grass and look at the sunset. It never quite happened. Uh, I was hoping to get a nice sunset and it just clouded up just before. Um, also, I've seen two animals that are obviously faster than me getting my camera out. I've seen a red squirrel alongside of Ennardale Water. And just coming over Kidsty Pike, saw a herd, probably a head of 30 deer, and I uh, had my earphones in, I was singing my head off. If I'd been a bit quieter, I might have got a bit close to them. And they just bolted, and within 30 seconds, they were down a dip and up the other side. Uh, incredible, incredible sight, but you'll just have to imagine that, sorry, because uh, by the time I'd got the camera out, they were miles away. Right, so a bit of an undulating walk along the side of Hawes Water now. Is this even recording? Hopefully it is. Um, and then some fields, Shap Abbey, um, and into Shap. So far there's been a few little sprinklings of rain, but I haven't needed to put my waterproofs on yet. So I probably just cursed it. Looks like a storm is following me Shop Abbey. Oh, 
Well, it's just gone half 11 and I'm already in Shep. I have beat the rain. You sort of. Morning guys, it is the start of day six I think, let me just get in the bus shelter, out the wind. Um, start of day six, just left the crown in, a uh, tiny little beer garden at the back, um, great hosts, lovely home cooked food, seven pound a night camping, can't recommend it enough, weather's awful, 20 mile day, cross farmlands, not that much to see, so let's see how the filming goes. Probably be a bit minimal today because it's meant to just dump on me all day. Don't know if the microphone will pick that up, but that's the sound of electricity crackling through the power cables. What a grey day! Thank you. 